The moment many of us Obsidian users have been waiting for for years has finally arrived. They've added the ability to create native databases via a new core plugin called Bases. This is a feature that I missed when I moved from Notion over to Obsidian, and I am so glad that it is finally here. The plugin is in early release, which means you only have access to it if you've made a one-time purchase of a Catalyst license. Because it's in early release, the plugin continues to evolve and improve. Originally, you were only able to create spreadsheet-like tables, but they've now added a new card view that lets you create things like image galleries. Let's take a look at how to set up one of these new databases. The quickest way to create a new database is by going to the command palette. So I'm going to do command P, and you could do control P if you're on Windows. And we're going to use this bases create new base command. I'll click on that. And that creates a brand new file of the type of base. So just like you have canvas files, we now have base files. If I scroll down here to see untitled, you can see that it's labeled as a base. So this is a plain text note inside of your vault, and the plugin applies all the styling and everything for you. Up here in the top left, we've got the views. So you can click on this and you can see all the different views that you have created. We've only got one so far. It creates a table for us by default. When you click on this arrow, you can configure the table or delete it or duplicate it. We can give it a new name. Uh, table is fine for now. And we can actually change the layout of the view if we wanted to. We'll explore that in a minute. I'm going to close this for now. The next thing over is our number of results. We can actually click on this and we can limit the number of results. So if I don't want to see all the files in my vault, I can just limit it to 10, and that will decrease the number of results that we're getting. I'm going to delete that so we get all the results. You can copy this to clipboard. So what this does is it actually just copies the data as a table. And if we were to go over here to a new note, and I were to just paste it in, that would paste it in as a markdown table, which is editable and it has no connection to the, to the base. It's just a copy. You can also export that out as a CSV if you would like. Then you've got your sorting options. You can sort you know, by different things, A to Z, Z to A, and then you can decide which property you want to be able to sort it by. So let's say name, and we want it to be Z to A, so that would give us everything from end of the alphabet to the front, and so forth. And then you've got the ability to filter. This is where you're going to be able to set up what notes are going to be included in this database. It gives you the ability to have filters that will apply to all the views, so when we create another view, the filter that I put in this all views here will apply to all of them. And then we have the ability to add filters specifically to this database. So I'm going to create an all views filter because I want this to be notes that I need to go back and review. So the property that I have for that is reviewed. It's a checkbox property. So I'm going to say is and then I'm going to say is not checked. And what's nice is that it just gives you this checkbox and you can click on it and go, okay, I want all of the ones that are reviewed. And you can then click on it again and say, I want all the ones that are, that are empty. So now this has narrowed this down. I've got a bunch of daily notes that I need to go back and review what I wrote. And then a few articles that I've saved that I'd like to go back and review. We'll go back and look at individual filters once I create another view. For now, let's go take a look at what else is available to us here. We've got properties here that we can then decide to show. Right now, we're just displaying what the name of the note is. If I wanted to see what links the notes have, I can click on this and then I can see all of the links that are inside of these notes. I could also include the path. This is where they're actually saved. File size, which it looks like that's hidden behind here. Yep, file size. So you can decide what information you want to show by clicking on these checkboxes. And this last button lets you create new notes that have the filters for this database. So I've set this database up to have the reviewed property and have it unchecked. So if I click this new button, this is going to create a brand new note for me and it's going to give it that property that I set up in my filters. So it has the reviewed unchecked and then I can add some notes here. Let Maybe let's link to this base and then when I click off that we can see untitled one and we see untitled base linked to it. So you could use this in a way to create 
basically templates for the notes and when you add a new one it will add everything that you have filter wise to that note so that it will show up in this database as well that's something that notion does and you can now do it here inside of obsidian so let's give our database a name. We can do that by just double clicking up here. We're gonna say needs review. That updates the link that we have in this file down here. And then let's go and create a new view. We're gonna create the card view for this. I'm gonna hit add view and we're gonna call this cards. And then we're gonna go down to layout and I'm gonna select cards as the layout. And then I need to give it a property that it can pull the cover image from. So I'm gonna have the property of cover and then the fit, you can either have it contain or cover. Cover means that it will fully fill the space, but it might cut off the edges of your image. Contain, it will make it so that it will show the entire image and it may not necessarily go all the way to the edge depending on the dimensions of your image. I'm gonna keep it for cover for right now. And then we can change the aspect ratio of the image if we want it bigger. We need to get some images on these to see what that actually does. Oh, it looks like I actually have an image already on this one. So you can see it, the image is kind of getting cut off on the edges here. So if I go back over here and I go to configure the view, I can say contain. So that does make the image smaller, but you can now see all the way to the edges of it. And then if we want to, we can go back to configure view and we can change the aspect ratio let's go up to two and so that makes it so that the image gets bigger here there's a lot more space up above and below this image if we go back to configure the view again and we say cover so now that fills this entire giant <laughs> image space and it cuts it off even more let's go back and configure again let's go down to like 0.5 and see what that looks like. So that makes it wider than it is tall and that shows us more of the image. So you can play around with this, display these images how you want to. I'm just gonna go back to one that seemed like a good amount of space and I'm actually gonna hit contain because I like to see the whole image here. And the properties apply to the views. So on the table view, I had it showing the links property. That links property is not showing here, but if I go in and click it here, those links now show up underneath the card or at the bottom of the card. And maybe I don't wanna show the links on this view. Maybe I want to show what the file size is. And then when I go back to my table view, it still shows the links, it's not showing the file size. So the properties are specific to the view. So now that we have another view, I'm gonna go over to cards and I'm gonna create a filter that's specific to the cards view. So that all the views get this reviewed is unchecked. I'm gonna close that and then I want this view to only show me the files that have a cover image. So in this property field, I'm gonna type in cover. I wanna get all the notes where cover is not empty. It popped up all these different options. So you could just say is not empty. And now that only gives us this one note that has an image on it. Or maybe there is an image gallery that I'm trying to create here and I want to see which notes do not have a cover so that I can add a cover. So in that case, I wanna select where cover is empty. And then that will show me all these ones and then I can go in and add a cover. And as I add covers to them, they'll disappear from this results. So that's how simple it is to get a database up and going in Obsidian now. As I mentioned before, this was something that I was really missing from Notion. Another thing, that you can do that's very similar to Notion. Notion lets you create these database views that you can go in and see them, but they also allow you to be able to embed your database inside of another page or another note. You have that ability here with the basis plugin as well. So I'm gonna open up that untitled note that we created earlier. And I'm gonna hit enter a couple of times and then I'm gonna type an exclamation mark and then the double brackets for my link. And then I'm going to find my needs review base. And now I can see my database view inside of this other note. And I can see the cards view inside that other note. And this has the filter where the cover is empty. Let's do cover is is not empty. So now we can see that. It has all the filters and properties and everything that I set up inside of that 
database. So you can create those same kind of dashboards that you can create inside of Notion with embedding different databases. You can do that here in Obsidian now. That's amazing. And all the things that you do here, like if I wanted to add a specific filter for this view, let's say links is not empty. So I want to see all the notes that have links. So now I have this specific filter for this table. And if I go back and I open up, let's open this up. That filter is applied because it's just, it's embedded in here. It's, oh, it's amazing. This is such an amazing new feature. And I'm excited that people get to use this soon. I'm excited to see what other views they come up with. We've got tables and cards now. I'd love to be able to see a Kanban board, maybe a calendar view. Let me know in the comments what you're excited for with this plugin. If you're new to Obsidian and would like to check out more of the basics, I recommend my Ultimate Obsidian for Beginners guide. You can check it out by clicking the link on your screen.